Warning, these revenge stories, might be upsetting to cheaters. To others, you just found the best place for your vengeful needs. To feel hurt and betrayed after suffering infidelity, is human. But some lose themselves, and indulge in the schadenfreude. These, are their revenge stories, that will make you either gasp, or grin. Loyal Senorita, puts her loyalty in the wrong man. So she lured him into her trap, leaving him stranded. Next, husband caught his cheating wife, pretends to leave town, and gave her the most unforgettable surprise party. Last story. A cheating husband, gets pranked during his divorce. Tell the like button, it looks like a bad before picture. This story is told from a female perspective. I am not proud of what I did, and I do feel that karma will get me one day. I'm prepared for it. I'm embarrassed, that a somewhat successful individual such as myself, is capable of something so petty and embarrassing, I'm 26. I had a great and awesome friend of two years, who asked me out, and we began dating. Let's call him Jaden. We clicked emotionally and he had this way about him, that I fell in love with. We were in a long distance relationship for a year. It felt really serious, to me at least. Jaden is the kind of guy that just goes with the flow of life, some call it lazy. It was normal for me to help him out financially, and I did so with love. I'd help him cover his mechanics bill once, and bought his groceries for his family multiple times, because they were in a rough patch. He always seemed to live so careless and I asked him jokingly once, if I wouldn't pay for your food, what would you do? He would tell me. Eat way less. Or nothing at all. While shrugging it off. He lived three hours away. All was fine and we frequently saw each other. But then it all changed. I found out from his sister, that he had been talking to other women while we were together. I confronted him, but Jaden denied it and refused to take responsibility, saying that I was the only one on his mind, and that his sister didn't know what she was talking about. I believed him, because I loved him. But three weeks ago, I found out from a mutual friend that he had been seeing, and sexy timing with another woman in his town. When I confronted him about it, he blamed me, saying, You know it's hard for me to control myself. You are the one who's neglecting me. You should know the distance is tough on me while we're apart. This was not true. I visited him every other weekend when I could afford it and we talked and texted, every day. He also said I didn't want him to live with me, which was true to be honest, but it was because I didn't want to support a grown man and pay his bills. I was heartbroken. Even more so, when my Jaden told me he loved me and wanted to do anything to make it work, only to drop all contact the very next day. I confided in my friends, who told me that the girl he was hooking up with, was nothing more than an easy woman who had been around. This hurt me even more to be honest. Let's call her destiny, I think it's really fitting. They also told me, that he had begun seeing her the day after we had our talk, and possibly even before then. I stuck by this guy through his worst times, the lowest point he was ever in. And he sexy times around on me, with the most questionable lady of the town, and lies about it many times. Holding false hope in front of me, as if I'm a donkey and he's baiting me with a carrot. Only to disappear suddenly without an explanation, for some cheap fun? During that time, I was humiliated by having to book a gyno appointment for a STD check. Why should I feel bad? I'm not the one who was unfaithful. Two weeks ago, while still nursing my heartbreak, I reactivated my Facebook account and spent hours combing through my exes and his new love's profiles. I knew I shouldn't have done it, but I couldn't help myself. Instead of dwelling on their flirty messages, I fixated on her profile. I read through months of cringe-worthy selfies, taken in a dirty, dark bathroom, with barely their clothing that even a promiscuous woman would be embarrassed to be caught in. Then I did it, don't judge me. I was in a bad place. I created a fake profile of a handsome man, who used to go to her school. I quickly befriended her friends, made fake posts, and added her as a friend. All of this took less than a day. You, would be surprised at how many people will befriend you on Facebook based solely on your appearance, regardless of whether they actually know you or not. In just two hours, I had 140 friends and was receiving friend requests every few minutes. I couldn't help but wonder who was more pathetic, me, or these people who were so easily taken in. The next day, I started chatting with her, and she was very open with me, even sending me pictures of herself in questionable clothing, to a complete stranger, without any in return. How is this not a red flag to many men? 
Being a woman myself, it was easy to tell her what she wanted to hear. Two to three days later, Destiny was complaining about Jaden to me, already. Yes you heard that right. I told her I wanted to meet up and will pick her up, and show her what it's like to be with a real man. At this point, I had hours of conversation saved, her saying the dirtiest wordplays that I've ever read, pictures, audios, what have you. It was time. While all this was going on, Jaden started to contact me, saying it was a mistake. I asked him if they had broken up, he says yes, twice, and they were not obviously. This should have broken my heart, but it didn't. I knew the truth, but told him that yes, I still love him, I can surely forgive and forget, and would love for him to move in with me. He sounded happy and excited, and said that he was going to give his two weeks to his boss, that day. Jaden texted me later, and told me that he just left them with no notice instead because. Who needs them no lives, frick him. He was going to start packing, and will head out with everything later in the week. Karma will get me for this, but this was the revenge. I posted all of the conversations up on the fake profile, tagged her in it, posted the pictures and videos for my ex's eyes only, and sat back and enjoyed the show. Before I deactivated the fake account, I had 53 likes and 82 messages. Her social circle, friends and family all saw it. Jaden saw it and coincidentally, immediately texted me to say, Hey babe, just wanted to say that I miss you so much, can't wait to be with you again. Miss you. Doesn't mention anything about the girl. But fair enough, he doesn't need to, as I'm updated more than he actually knows. Friday rolls around, and he tells me he is on his way to my apartment. This is the part where I have to tell you that I recently moved. So when Jaden was traveling, he didn't know where my new apartment was. So I tell him to meet me at a CVS close by, so I can direct him on where to go. Jaden being true to being Jaden, tells me. Sure, but I'm almost out of gas. I'll meet you there, so you can put some gas in the car. Don't forget your credit card. I, as the forgiving angel I am, agree, and tell him that I will, once he gets there. I get a text telling me he's at the CVS and asks where I am. I ignore it. 30 minutes later, he blows up my phone like a scammy spammer from an Indian call center. Calls ignored. I was petty, as I made it a point to let it ring once, so that he knows I send it to voicemail. One hour passes. He calls and leaves me a voicemail. Hey babe, I'm worried, about you of course, are you okay? I am, I am doing fan freaking tastic Two hours later, he says that he is stranded, drove to another CVS thinking I was there, but now he has no gas and is stranded at a gas station, with his belongings in the car. Calls ignored. I'm thinking about it's the perfect time to sleep, but I feel too excited. So I pop an Ambien, and hit the bed. Saturday morning. It looks like the apocalypse happened, according to my phone being blown up with 37 text messages, 28 missed calls, and 7 voicemails. All from one person? Who would that be? It's a shame I can't share the voicemails, but I can say that in the end, Jaden had to call his mom to pick him up. Since then, I blocked his number and then had to change my number since he would start calling me from his family's phone and blocked calls. Later I received a message from his sister, the same who told me about his affair. She was excited to share the aftermath with me. She tells me that their mom and Jaden came home, while Jaden was crying his snot out, their mom was fuming with rage. Apparently their mom didn't know about his cheating, and Jaden told her in the car. But the unsympathetic woman wasn't fuming because of his cheating. She was enraged towards me, because of what I did to her snotty kid. His sister made sure to tell me not to worry about it, that I was a badass and deserved better than her lying, cheating loser of a brother. I know I acted on impulse on all of this, probably destroyed this girl's spotless image in her social circle. I'm planning on reactivating the fake profile to say sorry or whatever, but not sure. She did knowingly sexy time a man, that had a girlfriend, seduced him even, and then cheated on him too. Let me know what you think. She doesn't know it was me, just a random dude that put her stuff on blast. I made a point not to share the pictures, only to my ex though. I even blurred her face, but her tasteless tattoos showed, so he knows it's her. Nobody has connected the dots, and nobody will. I was careful about this. I lost him, yes, but I don't want him back. I know this sounds crazy, but the feelings I had for Jaden, my ex, are still there. He will never forgive me since he is now unemployed, and the whole town knows his business, Destiny even admitted his Wienerschnitzel is a pinky, to share the load onto Jaden instead of taking the hits alone. Tiny part of me regrets everything, and that I want him back with me. 
Other bigger part of me, is glad I destroyed any type of reconciliation, as it was not going to work out in the end. Feels good to let this out, thank you. How did you stay calm and patient enough to pull this off? That amazes me the most. When I found out my ex was cheating, I was so angry that my face melted, and I wasn't capable of a single coherent thought. He prefers to text when he wants to lie to me. He hadn't figured out that I had that figured out already. Anytime I wanted to call him out on anything in his texts, I would take a deep breath and think about the crap he put me through, and my goal of ultimate revenge. It's weird, because I think I would have been able to cook up something better. My anger didn't let me dwell further into that though. I'm sorry your partner cheated on you. Breaking up helped me initially, but then I stopped feeling sorry for myself and the rage took over. I'm usually a very composed person face to face. The vindictive side of me had a growing grin as I read this. Congrats on telling the only confession revenge story I've ever liked. Well done. The fact that his sister gave you props is icing on the cake. Thank you kindly. You did only two things wrong. You inconvenienced his mother and cost her a tank of gas. I would send her $40 or so, cause you know she's never going to see it from her son. Add a note saying you're sorry about the inconvenience and the time she lost, but he really needed the lesson. Second, I think you shamed her more than him. He deserved way more. She owed me $120 times 4 months since I paid their electric bill. I think I will just call it even. I also saved their new puppy dog once. It ended up passing in the hands of these incompetents anyway, about 3 weeks later. But who's counting? I know everyone is congratulating you on a vindictive revenge well done, but I just want to extend a heartfelt condolence that you had to go through that. Yeah, you might have one in the end, but there are always casualties in war, you know? I hope you meet a guy who's worth your time and you can forget about this douche. Good Lottie woman, you are heartless. I've been cheated on by two of my long-term girlfriends after treating them both like gold for years. This type of revenge is absolutely unnecessary, and honestly, it's quite immature. If you are cheated on again, which I hope doesn't happen, and you really want to achieve revenge, then end the relationship clean cut by stating the reason and then severing ties. Live well and never look back, the silence is the nuke. Not trying to come down hard on you, and I wish you the very best of luck in the future. I wouldn't pull a stunt like this again in the future though. I am not surprised at all that you still have feelings for your ex. Why else would you have conducted this revenge tactic? I don't think this helped you at all to get over him. Sure, you made sure you cannot get back with him, but you also made sure that finding closure will be a lot more difficult. And no, I don't think he deserved it either. Sure, he was cheating on you, and he deserved to get dumped, and even to be exposed as a cheater. However, I don't believe what he did was ever done to hurt you on purpose. He was a cheating douche, but he didn't intend and actively plan to destroy your life, unlike you. Now, we're not here to judge, and I hate cheaters and liars like most people do, so I get why you did it. I just think it should have remained a fantasy. I hope you find closure soon and someone that truly loves you. I'm not sure what his motives were. He did ask and get money from me, because he didn't have money to pay for his car payment while he was messing around with the girl. All I could think about, was him taking the money. I sent him so he can drive, to go sexy time her or whatever. Who knows what he did with the money. That is not justification for my actions, but it did fuel the fire. What's done, is done. was told you guys would get a kick out of this, I had originally posted it to another topic, but it was suggested I'd share it with you. So here it is. Gather round boys and girls. Because it's time for the story of my cheating ex-wife, and how I intergalactically nuked her. Now bear with me, as I'll start from the beginning. I had a feeling she was cheating, as she set off a lot of red flags. Constantly laughing and smiling when texting, saying it was just her mother when I asked. Needing to stay late every night after work. When I'd call in, her co-workers said she left hours ago. When I asked her what was going on, she'd laugh it off and say it was just something they did to each other at the office all the time. 
the last straw to where I knew something was definitely up, was when she went out to get milk at 11.30 at night, and didn't come back till 2 in the morning. Now, if there is any words of wisdom I can pass on to others in all my years of experience, it's if you think your significant other is cheating, hire a private investigator. They're good at what they do, and they will get some evidence that really helps in the divorce down the road. Fast track to her birthday, several months later. Now I know what you're thinking, why the hell did I wait months before I confronted her, and did it really need to be on her birthday? The answer to the first question is that I wanted as much evidence as possible to hand off to my lawyer, as well as make arrangements to find a new place to live. Answer to your second question, of course it had to be on her birthday. You see, after asking her what she wanted to do on her birthday this year, she was rather insisted on me going out of town with my friends, as she just had to work anyways and didn't want to be reminded she was aging. So I know something is up, and after finding a bottle of champagne and two glasses hidden in my closet, something in me snaps. So I do what any sensible man would have done. I leave and go to my friend's house, pretending like I'm going out of town. While there I call up her mother, father, sister and several of her friends. I tell them how I want to give her this big surprise, by sneaking into her room with party streamers, kazoos and a big cake with candles. Sounds fun right? Well boy was it. Words wouldn't do it justice, but I'll try my best for you. It's 8.30 in the morning and I silently gathered everyone just outside our apartment. We all pile in the elevator, about 8 of us in total, her mother holding the cake, and me reminding everyone to be as quiet as they can be. I put my key in and unlock the door, we all sneak in and make our way down the hall towards the bedroom. Each hold a kazoo and mom holding the cake, grinning from ear to ear, tense with excitement. Well, as I throw open the door and we all yell surprise. The surprise, was actually on us. There was my wife, bent over in doggy style position with her lover. Staring at us wide eyed, mid thrust. Mom drops the cake. Sister screams. Father begins to shout. I, pretending to be horrified to which her friends try to push everyone out while yelling at her. Wife, excuse me, ex-wife, is sobbing and screaming how could I, while the lover is desperately trying to put his pants on while running out of the place. So directly afterwards, her mom was too busy trying to clean off the cake from the ground. The sister literally had to push her out of our apartment to get her to stop cleaning. Her dad at first tried chasing the guy, but came back to check on everyone. He kind of just looked at me as if he wanted to say, I'm so sorry before taking the mom to the car. As for my lovely ex, she literally just blamed everyone in the room. Blamed the parents for coming into our apartment, without telling her. Blaming her sister for being a skank, didn't understand that one at all. She even blamed her friends for not telling her about the, surprise? She didn't try to explain herself to me, just called me name after name, and threw stuff at me. It was so surreal. I had this expectation, that she would be clutching me and try to stop me from leaving, telling me how sorry she was. I thought it would be like the movies. But no, there was the woman I had loved for two years, screaming and hitting me, telling me I had ruined her relationship with this other guy. Wow. I guess in her mind she just completely stopped seeing me as her husband, but more as just her roommate. Needless to say, it was one of the best birthday presents I have ever given. Well to be honest, it was funny as hell at first. I tried to disguise my laughing, by pretending I was choking up. After so long of being betrayed, I felt like I was the one who got to have the last laugh. Plus, since I had hired the private investigator, I was able to prove she was using my money to pay for things for her lover, hotels, dinners, etc. So I did get some compensation for that. Though, she still did get half of my life's savings. But I was young and just starting out, so the amount I had then, is pretty laughable now. But then reality sets in. Your marriage is over. The woman you fell in love with has betrayed you. And the last two years of your life, were a bit of a waste. In the end, it's not even about the money. I really thought I loved this girl, why didn't she love me? For the longest time I wondered what was wrong with me, and if anyone would truly be able to love me. Not to mention, I was really close to her dad. Mine left when I was younger and I never spoke to him since then, so hers kind of took me under his wing. Kind of the father I never had. I still call him from time to time, share with him my accomplishments as they come, and even stop by to see him when I get a chance. Divorce is never fun boys and girls and take my advice. When you're young and in love, don't be foolish and run into something. Take some time, to really get to know the other person. Wait 3-5 to five years. 
move in together. I wish someone had just pulled me aside and said, man, think about what you're doing. Maybe you should give it some time. Also another piece of advice. The old saying about, you know how a girl really is, by how she treats her parents? This is absolutely true. She was really mean and bitchy to her parents. That should have been my first red flag. Last I heard she had moved in with the guy, or at least I think it was him. She had gotten pregnant and most likely has the kid. If they're still together, I really couldn't tell you. At this point, I just hope she found some happiness. Even if it's not me being the one who gives it to her. Excuse the crudity of this comment, but she was caught red-handed with some dude, whom to everyone present clearly wasn't her husband, and she has the nerve to ask, how could you? As if her family and friends interrupting her illicit sexy time, somehow puts you in the wrong. It left me dumbfounded for quite some time by this, but the more I look back, I think at the time she was in a sort of shock. There you are, one minute having passionate sexy time and the next minute, there is your husband, and family all holding birthday presents. Anyways, she needed a wake up call. Hey man, much respect for having to deal with that, and even the bit at the end, where you're able to hope she gets her own happiness. I got a lot of satisfaction hearing this story, although, I wish you never had to deal with that pain in the first place. You handled it like a champ, some people can only dream about getting that kind of justice. If life was all roses and daisies, it would be one boring life. To be honest, I hope you all have something which is the equivalent, of life slapping you across the face. I don't mean this maliciously, but from these experiences we grow into better people. Sometimes we need a little reminder what pain feels like. Here's a little quote that always stuck with me. You know that pain and guilt can't be taken away with a wave of a magic wand. They're the things we carry with us, the things that make us who we are. If we lose them, we lose ourselves. I don't know if any of you will take any meaning from it, but it has always brought me a little bit of comfort. Anyways, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I hope it made your day even just a little bit better. As I listened to your story, a sly grin came over me, wanting her to reap what she'd sown. I wasn't disappointed, sir. Excellent use of professional nuclear revenge. I'd be mortified if my folks walked in on me having plain sexy time. I'd be mortified for life if they walked in with my whole social circle and husband while I was cheating on him. I'd never be able to get over that. Never. When I visit her dad, she never really gets brought up, so I can't really be sure how her life is as of now. She never was really close to her parents, I always thought it was just a phase. But yeah, having her parents watched her cheating in that situation definitely didn't help the relationship. So what happened afterwards? What did her parents say? Her mom was pretty broken up. God, that still sticks with me today, this middle-aged woman sobbing uncontrollably, while looking for something to clean the cake off from the floor. Her father couldn't even look at me, nor I at him. The response I posted kind of says why. I think we were both ashamed to our cores. He, because his daughter did this to me. For me, because I thought I had lost my dad, again. So much respect, for being able to keep your cool that long. Nice one. It definitely wasn't easy. There were so many times I'd look over at her sleeping, and just have this overwhelming urge to grab her, and start to shake her while screaming. I know what you're doing to me. Cigarettes and long walks usually calm this urge. As someone who had been cheated on through my entire five-year relationship with my ex, who had two other girls he cheated on me with. I wish I could have had one moment of clarity. I understand what you're going through, because I can see it with my own eyes. The years that my ex lied to me and made me think I was paranoid, did major damage to my self-esteem. I'm basically faking being okay, and hoping that one day, things click and I will feel okay. It's soul-crushing. There were moments where I felt that I couldn't move on, but I did and so did you. I tried to focus on the positives that my ex gave me, like I moved to DC, which is where I've always wanted to live. Thank you for sharing your experience. As cliche as it sounds, time heals all wounds. Just know that it's not your fault. You can show all the love and warmth towards a person you can possibly give, only to be met with coldness. There's just some people like that in the world. Maybe it's because they have something they need to work out with themselves first. I couldn't tell you. What I can tell you, is that as long as you can wake up every day and be able to carry on, then you are winning. 
life is meant to be a series of ups and downs, it's how you know you're actually living. I wish you all the best, even though I know you are going to be okay. Thank you for sharing as well. The following story, is told from a female's perspective. A year ago, I was going through a divorce. It started great, problems and tensions build up. Part of the problems that led to our divorce, was that he was incredibly jealous and controlling, and always thought I was cheating on him. I wasn't. My soon-to-be ex-husband and I, decided to be friendly with each other during the process. We decided to stay in the same house because of money issues. This was not a good idea, but we hoped it would be short term. We decided to live apart and have separate bedrooms while living in the same house. We made a rule, that neither of us should bring someone over and have sexy time in the house. I thought it was just common courtesy, during an uncommon living situation. During the summer, we had a large storm that knocked out the power to most of our area. A massive heat wave followed. We were lucky, as we still had our electricity during this time. My soon-to-be ex-husband had just started dating someone new. She had no power, and was sweltering in the heat wave. In an attempt to be nice and to show that no hard feelings were abound, I told my ex that if she was really struggling, he could have her over to enjoy some glorious air conditioning. A small point for clarity, I work nights, thus I sleep during the day. I woke up one afternoon, to find my ex and new girl pulling up in the driveway, with an overnight bag in hand. Uh, okay, I guess she's spending the night, too. Doesn't matter, I had to go to work that night. My ex was horrified when he saw that I was home and awake. What did he expect? The new girl was rude when I introduced myself. I gave her the benefit of the doubt, because hey, his ex-wife, me, is there in her pajamas. So I get it. They went upstairs and I went downstairs to give them some space, remembering our rule of no sexy time. Oh, how naive and stupid I was. We didn't really speak to each other for the rest of the, awkward evening, and I went on my merry way to work. They were gone when I got home in the morning. A little time went by. She didn't stop over again, but they were still seeing each other. I really didn't care one way or the other, I was happy that he seemed happier, but that was about it. One night, before I had to go to work, my ex was sloppy drunk. He confessed that he had slept with his new girl, while I was home that night. I saw red. I'm not much of a yelling slash screaming type of gal, but I let loose. He apologized, and I went to work, and started to scheme. He was at work when I got home that morning. I went up to his bedroom, and threw back his blankets and sheets. I bounced on the bed for a while and rolled around to mess everything up. I then took a Durex, unrolled it, filled it with my under eye lotion, and threw that in the bathroom trash, right on top. I threw another in the wrapper of the blankets and made the bed again, like a rebellious teenager would. We didn't see each other that day and, again, I went to work that night. I got home the next morning and his car was still in the garage. Uh oh. He was supposed to be at work. I go in the house and he's still in his bedroom. Oh no. He called down to me and asked me to come upstairs. He was still in bed, and looked like he had been crying. He directly asked. Did you? Did you have sexy time in my bed? I tried to look dumbfounded, and said I had no idea what he was talking about. He stated that he had found his bed messed up, a magnum wrapper in the blankets, and he used one in the trash. After a while, I couldn't hold it in anymore and told him the truth. That I had staged the whole thing for revenge, because he broke the rule of no sexy time in the house. The most beautiful thing of all? He didn't believe me. He then stated that he had his first therapy session scheduled, for later that afternoon. A few weeks later, he told me that the new girl had broken up with him because of his issues and baggage. Nice revenge, but really, living with your ex, dating other people and having a no sexy time rule? Incredibly naive, to believe that's going to work. It was really a more of a, no sexy time in the shared house rule, but yeah. Incredibly naive on my part for sure. Many lessons were learned from that experience. You stayed till the end again, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. Do you like the new logo and layout of the episode? Let me know what you think, because your opinion is gold to me. Most of you might have noticed, it took me some time. So thank you for your patience. Also, show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.
remember that these stories are shared for your entertainment. This content is to be taken as such, and nothing else. Royal AI, rejects advocation or instigation of illegal actions.